So another model that got released yesterday, or at least I saw on Twitter yesterday, is this GPT for all. So this is an interesting project. It's based on Llama. So forget everything about, you know, trying to be able to use this commercially, but it's interesting to play with and sort of see, okay, if we take the fine tuning stuff beyond Alpaca, what can we actually get? And this is what this is doing. Now they've also done some other really cool stuff of where they've made it work on the M1 Apple Max and M2, I presume as well. And you can, you know, they've got instructions for how to do this. So if you want to run this locally, if you happen to have an Apple Silicon Mac, you can probably run this locally and try it out there as well. So I'm going to just go through a little bit about what they've done. And then I've set up a collab so that we can have a play with it as well. So they made a report, not a long one. It's just two pages, but it's pretty good. It covers exactly what they did, which is more than we can say for the GPT-4 report that came out. So what did they do? And they kind of took some of the ideas that Alpaca was starting to do with their data set. And you can see what they did was they basically took a bunch of 1 million prompt responses that they generated with GPT 3.5 Turbo. I'm pretty sure this is totally against the terms of service of OpenAI's API. So again, I don't think you can use any of this commercially. It is interesting to look at how they did this. And this sort of brings into perhaps why they created this as well. So the one we looked at yesterday was the Cerebrus family of models, and they were kind of showing off their training. So it turns out this is made by a, a company called Nomic.ai. And what their sort of key products or one of their key products is this idea of being able to visualize a whole bunch of text and prompts. And there's been many tools like this in the past. This one does look quite nice though. So we can basically come in here and we can do a search for prompts. And you can see here, I'm looking for Python prompts. And you can see, sure enough, it's going to go and find a whole bunch of things related to Python. And we can just go through those. And we can see the ID, we can see the prompt, we can the source that it came from, and we can see the response that it would get. So they've used this to basically do some really nice filtering of what they got back uh, from the GPT 3.5 Turbo API. So obviously they needed prompts to send to that. So they took a number of data sets for doing this. And one of them is this chip two. One is some coding stuff from a stack overflow questions. And then the P3 data set. So the P3 data set is actually up on Hugging Face. You can see what it is. And so you can see if we look in here, we can see, let's just pick something a little bit different, generate a question. So we can see that given this context, generate a question for it. And then this is what it would generate out. So this data set is used in fine tuning a number of papers. I think it's used in the FLAN paper from memory. It's multilingual, although I'm not sure if they used all of that, or whether they just used English for this. But anyway, they were able to use those and then take what came back. If we look at their report, they were able to then filter out what were not good responses that the chat GPT API came back with. And then using their system for filtering, they were able to filter those out. This then basically reduced it a lot. They were then able to either leave the P3 ones in there or take them out. And you can see that in the end, they've got like a bit under, I think if they included the alpaca as well, they're around about 500,000 different pairs of prompts and continuations that they had. They then took the Llama model and did a LoRa fine tuning. So this is the kind of fine tuning that we've been doing in a number of the videos that I've showed you going through. And then they've documented how much it costs them. It is quite nice the way they've written it up and that we can see clearly what they've done. So have a look at their tool. The tool is kind of cool to check out and play around with. And then the cool thing is they've put the checkpoint up on Hugging Face. So you can follow the info in here if you wanted to put it on your Mac and try and run it on your Mac. I haven't done this. I'm sure this repo is quite trustworthy, but I would be very careful about just blindly putting C++ code onto your Mac when you don't know. I'm sure sooner or later, we're going to see something like this where the code is going to be malicious. I don't think that's the case here, but just be wary of that. What I've done is set up a collab where we can actually look at this. And we can bring in their particular LoRa checkpoint. So 
We've got the sort of standard stuff that we've been doing in some of the other inference notebooks. I'm just bringing in the Gnomic AI, GPT for all, LoRa. We bring that in. That under the hood is actually loading a Llama checkpoint as well. They use a different Llama checkpoint than I've seen most people use, but it seems to me that it's probably basically the same weights for that. It will take a while to load. So you're looking at a bit under 30 gigabytes to load. And then I've just set up a simple thing to play with this so that we can check this out. Now I'm running this on an A100. It may fit. I'm not sure if it's going to fit on the T4, the free version. You can try it out. My guess is possibly not. It should fit on a 3090, no problems or a 4090, no problems. And perhaps even a P100, if you've got access to one of those. Anyway, let's have a look at this. So we can see here, I've taken some of the sort of llama type prompts. And said, okay, well, what's the difference between alpacas and sheep? And we've got our response here is alpacas have longer, softer coats. It's actually quite nice what it's giving us in response here. And this is the danger with some of these is that people are hyping this up and not just this particular model, but a lot of these models, people are hyping up as the open source chat GPTs for that. We're quite a way off that. Yes, these things are really cool. And yes, we could probably fine tune them for a specific domain to do something, but they're not ChatGPT, as I'll show you as we go through. Anyway, this one gives us a nice answer. Next one I ask you, okay, explain a rainbow. And so it gives us a nice description of what a rainbow is, what's creating it. Again, very nice, right? That we've got going on here. Because this is trained on a lot of other things, I can then ask it to create a list of things I need to do to plan for my wife's birthday party. Okay, so it says I can help with planning and it does give me a list of different things and they all seem to be things that make sense, right, to this task. So in this case, the model is doing a really good job with this kind of thing. What I wanted to try and do was test it out of the just alpaca prompts because it's trained with other prompts. You can kind of mess with the context prompt. So here I've basically said, pretend you're a smart chat bot that is friendly but drunk. Answer the question asked of you. So using that sort of context, I ask it, okay, write an email to Sam Altman explaining that GPT-4 should be open source. Let's look at the response that it gets back. Dear Mr. Altman, I'm sorry for my behavior last night and I apologize if it caused any inconvenience or embarrassment. I'm guessing this is the drunk part. I did run a, a number of th these a few times. One of the times it came back quite funny saying, Dear Mr. Altman, even though I am very inebriated at the moment, I want to talk to you about something very serious which I thought was quite funny also. Anyway, you can see that here, it's basically saying, however, as a smart AI language model, I believe in transparency, fairness towards all parties involved. Therefore, I would like to express my opinion on the matter at hand. And then it's got some nice points here. So GBT was released under an open license by OpenAI, which allowed researchers around the world to use their data and models freely without restrictions. Similarly, releasing GBT3 under this would have similar benefits. And you can see that it's making a very coherent argument here. In addition, making GPT-4 available to everyone will allow more people to explore its potential applications and contribute to further advancements in natural language processing technology. So this is definitely one of the better models that we've seen, right? Much better than the Cerebrus models that we tested out yesterday. And even with the fine tuning, you now it would be interesting to take those models and or the GPT J6 billion model and fine tune them on this data set to see, okay, how much do they improve as well? But definitely the Llama, I think I've talked about this before, Llama 7 billion is trained on a trillion tokens in pre-training. Uh, that just makes it a lot better with this kind of stuff. Next one I wanted to try it was a hard one. So this is getting it to write a limerick. So I asked it to write a limerick about a cat called Max. And you can see that it gets the idea of what a limerick is, but it doesn't rhyme. There once was a cat named Max who loved to eat fish and chase mice. He had a long tail with stripes on it too, which made him look quite cool. So you would expect this one to be like quite nice, would rhyme with mice or something like that. And this is where we can see that this model is not ChatGPT and not as good as ChatGPT or GPT-4. Now, maybe we don't need to have every model be as good as ChatGPT and GPT-4. That's a different argument. But I am a little bit, actually, I'm quite a lot opposed to people saying that suddenly, oh, this is uh, the 
ChatGPT you can run on your Mac or something like that. If we compare the actual responses from ChatGPT and GPT-4 with the limericks, we see, okay, Max was a feline of pride, never one to hide. He strutted with grace and owned every space, a true king of his domain he'd decide. So this is definitely a limerick, right? It's got the form, it's got the rhyming. We can see this with this one as well and with the GPT-4 one as well. The GPT-4 one uses much more, well, a little bit more advanced in the rhyming. There once was a cat named Max whose paws had incredible attacks. He'd leap and he'd pounce on a mouse in the house and no prey could ever relax. So this shows you that these models, there's just a depth there that is not in these fine-tuned llama models. Even though the llama models are really good and can be used for purpose, especially if you were to fine-tune them for that, they're not chat GPT, they're not GPT-4. The last one also I gave it was a, a, because this has been trained on code, I thought let's give it the one of asking it to write a function that can to check if the number is prime or not. It didn't do a good job. It basically just is writing to check if it's odd or even here. And you can see when we ask it, is, is 15 prime, it says true, which is not the case. So anyway, have a play with this one. It is quite a nice model to play around with. I do think if we get a fully open source version of something like this, if we see a model that's open source that is tuned on a trillion tokens and we've got a data set sort of similar to this, then we'll definitely have models that we can fine tune for specific purposes that don't need to be using the chat GPT or the, the GPT-4 APIs. Anyway, as always, if you've got any questions, please put them in the comments. If this was useful to you, please click like and subscribe. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.